and now we should be able to pick up our items and yes we can and if we print our inventory we can see they are there hey there i'm your host lesoe and this is part four of our inventory series in today's video we will be creating that pickup function for our inventory so with that said let's begin let's start by going into the content drawer into the inventory system folder over here we want to right click go to the blueprint class and let's create a new actor component and we'll call it bpc underscore inventory and this will be the inventory component that we'll add to our player in order for our player to have the inventory so let's open this up on event begin play we want to do a resize of the inventory and for that we need two variables we need a item slots variable and hence plural we'll have it a as a list so let's do s underscore item slot this will be the variable type and on the right hand side we can make it an array let's do one more we'll make it a single this will be a integer and we can call it f2 to rename inventory size let's grab the item slots to a get to a resize of the array and this will be the inventory size and if we compile the project we can give it a default value, so we'll do 21. We'll try get 9 in each row on the UI display. Okay, so with that, let's also create a new function to print our inventory. So we'll do print inventory, so we see what's happening. Um, for that, we need to grab our item slots and do a for each loop. So for every single um, array list, we'll do a print string. So out the array element, let's do a break. We want to do a print string. And if we drag out from the purple pin and do a append, we can add a few more to our list. And we'll start with the array index. So this will be like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we'll do a double dot space. And for C, we'll do the item ID. And we can have an equals or space equals space. That. So we'll get the row list. We'll get the name of the item and how much of the item we have. So let's uh, compile and save that. Now let's go ahead and add this inventory component to our player. So content to drawer, content, third person, blueprints, third person character. On the left hand side, click the green plus and we'll do BPC underscore inventory. And over here, we can manually change the size if we want to, but we're fine. So let's compile and save that. And since we're here, we'll do a keyboard one event. We can also change this by clicking here, selecting any key we want. And on pressed, we'll drag from our inventory component and do a print string. Oops, uh, print inventory. So it'll just call that function for us and let us know what we have inside our inventory. So let's save that and to test it, we'll play. And if I press one, we'll get a list. So we have 21 slots starting at zero all the way to 20. We have nothing in there. And if we pick up our items, they just simply get destroyed. So next we'll work on creating that pickup function. So now let's head over to our inventory component once again. And in here, we want to create a function called pickup. And this pickup function wants to know about the item ID, which will be a row. And we want to know about the item quantity. And this will be a integer. Now with this integer, we'll promote it to a local variable. We want to store it locally. And if we pick it up, then we'll remove it. So local item quantity. And if this is greater than zero, so this will be our condition. So if there's something there, we'll do a while loop. And we also want to check that um, the inventory is not full. So we'll do a and boolean in here, like so. And if this is condition, while this is true, it will continue happening. <clears throat> so for this, we'll add a new variable, local underscore is full. And we want to do a not boolean on that. So if we're not full, and if we're greater than one or greater than zero, we'll go and pick you up. 
Now we want to decide, do we want to add this item to a already existing slot in the inventory? And for that, we need to see if the item is matching. And if there is no matching items, we need to add it to a new slot. So let's first take care of the item if we're matching. So for that, we need a new function. So let's go ahead and create that. Let's call it find matching slot. Inside here, let's click on the function and add an input. This will be our item ID. Then we want to grab our item slots and do a for each loop. And we're trying to see if this item ID matches any of the items ID we already have. And if they do, we'll add it if we also have space available. So for that, we need to get our item ID. And all this does is it gets this for us. And we can do a equals equals to compare the two. And we'll do a and boolean because we also want to see is the item quantity um, less than the max. Now for this, we need to create a new function. So let's go ahead and do get item data. And we can make this a pure function because we'll just be reading data. So also we need a input again, item ID. And we'll do a get row. And in the data table, we can add our item data and we can do a return node and we'll return this table there. Let's do item data. Let's compile and exit this then. And over here, we can drag this copy paste. And if we get our get item data function, we can plug it in. And now we can see if um, we'll do break first of all. And we want to see if the slot quantity is less than the item quantity here. So we'll do a less than, connect that there, and we can click back on this and hide all the unconnected pins. And if those two conditions are true, well then we'll do a branch. So press B left mouse to get a branch, connect the execution pins, and we'll then do a return node. And if they match, we'll return the index and success. And if they don't, we'll return a no value and no success. So for that, we need the index and a Boolean. So we can add a output. We'll say success. So matching Boolean and we'll add the index at which they matched. So for that, the index will return will be this one here. Let's reroute this nicely. Select both, press Q to even them out, and we'll do success. And let's copy this return value or return node. And if the array has been completed and we found nothing, well, then we'll do success false and minus one to indicate a null value. And let's compile and save that. So back in here, we then want to get our find matching slot and we'll add it to the loop body. And the item ID we'll get from here. So right click, get item ID log it in. We then want to grab a branch. And if success is true, we'll add it to a already existing slot. And if false, we'll add it to a new one. So let's go take care of creating that function. We'll call it add to slot. Inside here, we want to click on the function and we'll add two inputs. This will be our index. We're adding it to and we'll do the item quantity that we want to add. Let's grab our item slots to a get a copy of that index. So this guy here. And we'll do a again, grab this. We want to set array element. So we're updating that array. We're overwriting it with new information. So the index again, this index here, we can do get index just to Keep everything clean, the same guy as this one. And for the item, we can go ahead and make to split this open. And the item ID will add from here so we can split this. And the item quantity will be this item quantity plus uh, this item quantity there. So get item quantity like so. And we'll plug this then into the new item quantity will set. And let's compile and save that. And back inside of our pickup function, we want to grab this add to slot, 
connect it to true on the execution and index goes to index like so. So after we've added it to a already existing slot, we then want to grab our item quantity, the local one, and just decrement it by one, just like so. And um, we'll do some more stuff over there. Now, if we don't add to a slot, we need to add it to a new slot. So let's take care of that. First, we want to see, is there any slots available? So let's go ahead and create a new function called any slots available. So over here, we'll grab our item slots and we'll do a for each loop. So, and we'll do a break. And we can check either the item ID or the item quantity if they're equal to zero to indicate a null slot, so an empty slot. So we can go with item quantity. If it's equal to zero, therefore it's going to be empty. We can hide the unconnected pin as well. So we'll grab a branch, like so, and then return this success, like so. And we can also indicate the index that it's free at. So let's grab that and align it so it looks nice and pretty. And over here, we'll call this simply index. And this can be a success value. I will set to false or true over here. Break that, by the way. And that's that. And if it completes, well, you know the story. This will be false, and this returns as a null value. That's looking good. Let's also make this pure. And compile and save that. Next, let's go ahead and add that add to new slot function. And this will create that new slot for us. So in here, we want to know a few things. Let's start with the item ID. This will be a name. We'll then have our item quantity we're adding. And lastly, the index we're adding it at. So um, let's grab our item slots to a set array element again. We're overwriting data. And we can break this or make item slot. Um, item ID to item ID, item quantity to item quantity, and index is this guy there. And this is all. Let's compile and save. Back inside of our pickup function, on false, if the matching slot has returned false, what we'll do is we'll grab another branch, we'll check any slots available, and if we return true, we'll add it to our new slot, like so. And if it's false, what we'll do is we'll set this local full to be true, because we are full then. The item ID will come from this guy. So let's copy paste that. Item quantity will always be one. So let's also set this here. Um, make sure that's not zero. And the index will be this guy there. Okay. Now, next, what we could do is um, let's also decrement this by one, actually. Um, actually, we don't have to. We'll do it here. So we want to connect that here. And we could do a sound effect action going on and then return. I am a success as a boolean and the local um, item quantity left. So how many are left? And this is success. Have we picked that up or not? So um, for that, let's go ahead and create that function. And let's call it play item sound effects. Inside, let's click on this function and let's add a variable calling it sound. Now for the type will be sound base, object reference. We want to get our owner, then get that owner's location. So get actor location and we'll do a play sound at location. So location goes there, sound goes there and the execution pin goes there. Now with this, we'll also need another function. So let's do that. And this will be called the get item sound effects. So for this, we need to have an input, which will be a name, call it item ID. 
And earlier, we made the get item data, so we can connect those IDs there. We can break this open to a return value and just return the sound effects. So there we are. Making it nice and compact. And with that, this can also be a pure function. So let's do that. Compile, save everything. And back inside of our pickup function, we can then do get item sound effects, get that item ID we want to play. Break this open. We'll have our four options we want to pick up and do play item sound effect. So pick up goes there. Oops, there. And this we can hide. Connect it here to the execution flow and we'll return that we've picked it up. Success and the item quantity is zero. Let's copy that now. And on completed, if we haven't or if we've completed it, we want to return local is full not. And then we want to return our item quantity. So let's grab that and put it there. So this is looking good and I think we're good to check this out. So let's compile and save. Next, let's go ahead and update our item component. So we'll go to item data, PPC underscore item data. And over here on the pickup item, we can break this chain. And we'll do a from the interactor get component component by class. And this component will be our inventory system. Let's do is valid just to make sure it is. And if it's valid, we'll then do a pickup, which is the function we just made. The item ID will come from our item data. So let's do that, do a break. Item ID goes there. We can hide all the unconnected pins. Item quantity comes from here. And we can do then a branch. So if it's true, if we've picked it up, well, then we'll destroy that actor. So get owner and destroy actor. Compile and save. So with that done, we should now be able to test this. So let's hit play. And if we press one, we can print our inventory and we're getting none and zeros. So let's pick up our bow and what do we get? We get and bow zero one equals one. So we have one, we picked up all three items and because they don't match, there are a different item each time, they don't stack. So to check if this is stacking, we can go ahead and add in our potion. So items health potion. So we have one and let's add, for example, three health potions. Now make sure uh, that in the data table itself, so item data, data table, if you're doing this, make sure that the health potion or anything, the slot quantity, which is the stacking quantity, is greater than one. So you'll know it if it's not. And let's hit play and let's see what happens. So this picks up uh, the function or physics is not set here, but um, if we pick it up and print, yeah, they stack. So let's see what's up with that. Um, they're not falling and maybe control E and item mesh construction script. Ah, so set physics is on false. It looks like, um, so let's grab our item mesh and do set physics, set simulate physics to true. And that should fix everything there. And do compile save. And if we play that again, they should fall on the floor. And they do. Okay. So once again, pick everything up and print, and it works. So this is it for today's video. In the next episode, we'll be creating the inventory UI. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, leave a like. And as always, happy developing.